Hello viewers, in this video we are going to learn about hardwired control unit and how timing and control signals are generated by hardwired control unit. The control unit is one of the important components of a processor that interprets program instructions read from memory and generates control signals in order to direct other parts of the computer to perform specific micro operations are required to execute those instructions. The control unit can be implemented in two ways. One is hardwired control and another one is microprogrammed control. Whereas coming to the hardwired control, in this, the control unit is made up of sequential and combinational circuits to generate control signals. Whereas coming to microprogrammed control, in this control, in this type of control unit, a control memory on the processor contains microprograms that activate the necessary control signals in order to direct other parts of the computer to perform specific micro operations required to execute those instructions read from memory. In this lecture, we are going to discuss in detail about hardwired control unit. Here, in this slide, the block diagram of the hardwired control unit is illustrated. Here, the dotted rectangle box it encloses the important components of the control unit. Okay, if you look at the dotted rectangle box, it covers uh, two decoders. One is three by eight decoder, decoder. Another one is four by sixteen decoder. One I flip flop control logic gates and 4-bit sequence counter. Uh, just assume that um, an instruction that is read from the memory, now it is placed in the instruction register. Now we are going to discuss how this instruction, which is read from the memory, which is now available in the instruction register, is going to be interpreted by the control unit and how it initiates the control signals in order to uh, make the other part of the computer to perform micro operations. Okay, um, here in this instruction, uh, 12 to 14 bits of the instructions are given as input to the 3 by 16 decoder, which, which in turn, based on the input 3 bit input received from the op code of the instruction, it activates one output line out of eight output lines, uh, eight, eight of its output lines. Okay, uh, for example, if the input values it received from the upward part of the instructions are all set to 0, uh, if it receives 0, 0, 0, then it will activate the output line designated with D0. And if the input values are uh, 0, 0, 1, then it will activate the output line designated with D1. Similarly, if suppose if it is uh, set to triple 1, then it will activate the output line designated with D0. Whereas coming to the 4-bit uh, sequence counter, it can count up to uh, 0 to 15 in binary form. And uh, the values produced by the 4-bit sequence counter are given as input to the 4 by 16 decoder, which, uh, which activates based on the input it received from the 4-bit sequence counter, it activates one output line out of 16 output lines. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, if the 4 by 16 decoder receives um, all zeros as, in, as its input, then it will activate the uh, T naught timing signal. If suppose if it receives the input 0, 0, 0, 1, then it will activate the timing signal T1. And uh, similarly, if it receives the input from the 4 bit sequence, sequence counter or uh, four ones, then it will activate the timing signal T15. That is, the in short, we can say that the subscripts of the output lines from the decoder it indicates the decimal equivalent of its um, binary input values. Okay, uh, here you can observe the four bit sequence counter is designed with three inputs one is increment, clear, and clock pulses. Usually, this 4-bit sequence counter, it, uh, uh, it increments its values from uh, 0 to 15. Okay? Once it reaches uh, 15, then again it will restart from 0 to 15. This process will be continued. 
okay and once in a while clear uh, if clear input is enabled it, if it is set then um, then the output that is generated out of 4 by 16 decoder it will be t not so whenever t not timing signals need to be need to be generated out of 4 by 16 decoder by the time only clear input of the sequence counter is set otherwise the 4 bit sequence counter it will do the increment value increment operation only let us now discuss the relationship between the control signals and timing signals with an example timing diagram. Okay, here uh, the timing signals are generated by 4 bit sequence counter and 4 by 16 decoder as we just discussed in this diagram. Okay, um, here you can observe that uh, timing signals from T0 to T15 are uh, generated with the help of 4 bit sequence counter and 4 by 16 decoder. Okay. And also you can notice the 4-bit sequence counter are um, having the inputs increment, clear and clock. Okay. So let us now proceed with our example uh, timing diagram. In this timing diagram, you can observe here the clear input of the sequence counter is active in the beginning of the clock cycle itself. So whenever it is active in the next clock cycle, T0 must be generated out of 4 by 16 right? So accordingly, now in this diagram, T0 is active. So in the subsequent clock cycle, you can observe here uh, the uh, sequence counter, clear input of the sequence counter, it is in falling edge. It means that it is not active. Whenever clear input of the sequence counter, it is not active, then the sequence counter, it will do the increment operation only. Okay. So in the um, that's why in the subsequent uh, clock cycles you can notice in the uh, in the zeroth clock cycle after the rising edge of the clear um, input of the sequence counter t0 is active in the uh, first clock cycle t1 is active in the second clock cycle t t2 timing signal is active and it will proceed up to t15 uh, unless the again the clear input of the sequence counter is set okay let us now uh, discuss um, one example um, that sequence counter need to be set, the clear input of the sequence counter need to be set when D3 as well as T4 is active. Okay, what is that? Uh, we would like to clear the sequence counter when D3 as well as T4 is active. So let us now check either in the timing diagram when D3 and T4 together are active, so by the time uh, the, the clear input of the sequence counter need to be enabled. Okay, let us take first D3. D3 is active when it is active during the third clock cycle of the timing diagram. Okay, and uh, coming to uh, T4, T4 is active during the uh, fourth clock cycle of the timing diagram. So during this point, during this point, since both D3 as well as uh, T4 both are active, so at this position, uh, at this point in time, uh, the clear input of the sequence counter also can be enabled. So like this, whenever required, whenever uh, whenever it needed to generate T0 timing signal, then uh, the clear in clear input of the sequence counter can be enabled. This is about the um, timing signals of control unit. Students, if you find this video useful to you, kindly subscribe this channel. Thanks for watching.